Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to the Culture and Cannabis Podcast. Happy Thursday. We're back in the studio. Everyone's here. JC was gone mm. last week. I was gone the week before. Chuck came and filled in for you, JC. So yeah, was good... it was it was a good time, you know. Yeah. Chuck, I love I love that guy, Chuck. I mean, you got Chuck in studio. That's a miracle. I, I mean, I had to really like <laughs> force him to be here, but he, he came through. But listen, um, we have a great we have two great guests today. We do. Um, tell us a little about who we got today, Jake. Yeah, so um, you know, it's, it's a really cool brand that's uh, a newly kind of emerging into the Nevada market. They're, it looks like they're really uh, taking a swing at kind of changing the culture of, of, a, of an entire category. And we're talking about the drink category. And we're talking about a beautiful brand named Can. So we have this look, very simple. Yeah. Can. So. Can right? C A N. And so made here in Nevada. Made made here in Nevada. Um, and we got we got the co-founders. Both yeah. the founders here of Canada. Both, both, both. Are you guys out there? Okay. Nope. Yeah. Oh, oh, there, there, there they is. are. Wow. What's what's going on, guys? Welcome Whoa. to the podcast. Thank you for having us. We're glad to be here. Yeah. Hello from San Francisco. So you so you guys are in San Francisco right now. And that, that's where you guys are based out of? We're kind of based all over California. It's it's almost like it's an entire country, and we have to have people in Sacramento, and LA, and San Francisco, and Oakland, and Santa Barbara, San Diego. Um, we've got an office in Los Angeles where we meet up a bunch, but uh, we're we're on the road more often than we are in there. Nice. Awesome. I, I want to dive into all that stuff because I'm that's really interesting to me. Just California in itself, right? But but before, like, tell us about the brand. Give us give us the flyover. What is Can? How did it start? How did it start? Yeah. Give it to us. Yeah, definitely. Happy happy to share. So, I mean, you you both pointed it out. I mean, it's very simple. It's Can uh, with two ends, right? It's, it's cannabis in a can. Uh, it is a micro dose, so two milligrams THC, four milligrams CBD. That's intentionally designed so you can have a lot of them, right? It's 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 sort of cut from this mold of alcohol alternatives. A lot of us recognize alcohol is one of the worst things we do to our bodies. We're tired of, of, of being forced in social situations to drink alcohol. And so we, we wanted a product that was sessionable, that was microdose, that tasted delicious, um, that you could drink a number of uh, in, in one setting and never feel like you were too out of control, too high, um, too afraid. It's a fantastic product for first timers, um, people new to cannabis. It's great for people that have a ca casual social relationship with cannabis that are looking for a form factor that maybe integrates better with their existing social lives. Um, and, and so we really thought about the dosing and, and the flavor and how that comes together in, in, in our, in our cute little cans as being key to really unlocking the social potential of, of cannabis and, and of cannabis beverage. Nice, nice. Yeah, and uh, the uh, the story of, of how we got involved in it, 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 Jake has basically been thinking about doing this for the last seven years, and we were both management consultants thinking about consumer brands and evaluating what was selling in Whole Foods and traditional uh, retail channels. And we came from two totally different ends of the spectrum. Jake was always about cannabis is going to be really big. I'm, I saw it growing up in Colorado. And I was on the other side of the table drinking a margarita saying, you're wrong. Cannabis is for stoners. I'm never going to be involved in this industry. I can't imagine myself walking into a dispensary. I don't know the first thing about milligrams or sativa indica. And it, the whole thing just intimidates me. And as I got older and my hangover started getting worse, I, I reached back out to him and said, okay, okay, I can understand the need to wean myself off alcohol. Um, what's this microdose beverage thing you're talking about and how, how do we bring it to market so that we can help other people do the same? Nice. Wow. Uh, yeah. And I, I love it how it's like the, the thought and the intent that goes behind, behind it. Right. It's, it's, it's definitely, you know, you have a lot of products out there that are created like solely for like you know high thc solely to get you fucked up right mm -hmm. or to get you that head change and uh this is like created you know based on uh consumer behavior right yeah. and changing the way that people kind of consume and and do their things and i think it's it's very bold for one but i think it's very genius and i think if you guys can pull it off it's going to be uh very fruitful for you guys so congrats let's try this thing you're, you're gonna, you want to crack into one gonna, we which one in? which one are you gonna go with I'll, you, which one do you got? I'm gonna, you know, I, which one should I go for? We got the uh, the blood orange. I'm going to do grapefruit oh, you, rosemary. You're going to do the grapefruit rosemary? Yeah. I'll do the blood orange. Should we, should we get a little crack on the, on the camera here? That was a good one. I've been alcohol free all year long, so this is perfect. Cheers. Sorry, Cheers. I, I Cheers. <laughs> My bad. Cheers. Mm. Cheers, guys. Yeah, it's... Um, 
I, I'm a huge lightweight. Cheers. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to drink an entire lemon lavender can, even though it, it might sound crazy for people that are more experienced with cannabis, but five milligrams for me will knock me on the couch and I can't even you know handle anything after that. So uh, a two milligram, even though it seems like it's such an inconsequential amount, for a lot of people that were newer to the category, it, it's maybe the most that they can handle and still feel socially comfortable. Yeah, I was going to ask about that just because in Nevada, I know it's probably different in California and, and, and every state for the most part, but, um, you know, per average product for edible, 10 milligrams is the standard. Um, do you guys think that you guys will ever go up higher to a 10 milligram or you guys are going to try to stay around that two milligram of THC to four milligrams of CBD? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And we are often encouraged a lot by our partners, channel partners, dispensaries, you know, would you make something stronger? Like, why not 10 milligrams? Um, and, and we heard a lot of that in the early days when we were building, building this product. And um, it's interesting because we hear just as frequently from consumers, why would you ever do a one milligram THC uh, uh, can, which is crazy if you think about it. So there's enough people that are interested in micro dose that are saying one and a half cans is my perfect amount, you know? And, and so it's like, okay, well, if that's the case, then we're really serving sort of a, a niche in the market of folks that wanna be social. They wanna hold something in their hand, they wanna drink, um, but they can't do 10 milligrams. Definitely not at once. Maybe they could do it, you know, over the course of an evening, maybe over three hours. Um, and, and so what's great about the beverage is because it's in a liquid, because you start absorbing it faster, your body, um, you know, feels that it gets, feels that cannabis experience in a different way than I think if, if you were eating, you know, a two milligram mint or gummy, um, that also helps us too. And it allows people to get that quicker feedback, that biofeedback about whether they should have a second one or a third. I mean, we'll often, Luke and I, um, you know, on, on a week and night out have three or four or five. Um, and that's what's the, that's the beauty of the product. Think about it like a light beer, right? Um, you're, you're, you're meant to have more than, than one. Yeah. There, there's also a lot of beverages out there that are doing the 10 milligram thing all the way up to 100 milligrams and they're doing it really well. And, mm -hmm. and so we see that as a segment of the beverage market that's already served. And what we want to do is help dispensaries and, and any place where you can buy cannabis offer something under one brand name that speaks to a new and different consumer. In order for cannabis to, to continue to grow to the expectations everyone has for it, there need to be more brands that speak to that person that maybe isn't walking into the dispensary today, but that if a more experienced person hands them a six pack and you know gives it to them at a barbecue and, and they say, wow, this is great. What is this brand? Where do I get it? They make their first ever dispensary trip. And what we found in California and what we think we'll see in Nevada is once somebody buys their first six pack of can, they buy another one and they buy another one and they buy another one. And so it's, it's all about finding these new people, welcoming them into the cannabis ecosystem and giving them an experience that they can share with their friends who, who are new to it. Yeah, I mean, me and JC got a couple cases and I know I crushed my three yeah. six packs within like two, three days because they're that good <laughs> like this one i'm sipping right now and yeah. i love it and i love the fact that you guys like really took the time to like think out your guys's cans and like the marketing behind it like you know they have these like cute little sayings on the back mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. blase about being basic you know what i'm saying like yeah. i think that's so sick yeah and they have like these cute little <laughs> things that like kind of talks about the flavors so talk about like the marketing behind it right obviously you said that you know you guys were working you know with big uh chain retailers such as like whole foods like i could easily see this like walk into a whole, whole foods and just buy this off, you know, one of their little drink counters, right? Um, so what was your idea when, when building the packaging, the marketing, and like the whole brand identity for it? Yeah, definitely. So it, when I grew I grew up in Colorado and, and, and when Colorado went through its adult use process, um, it, and seeing the mark, the products that got onto the market early on, uh, it was it was always such an interesting kind of question of like, how do consumers want to consume cannabis, and what, how do I find myself in these products? And for us, beverage was obvious because it felt like the thing that we do when we're trying to be social is drink a beverage. That's true of caffeine and alcohol, right? Um, but all of the beverages that we saw in the market, and this is true even in California in the medical market before it flipped over, you would see these products, and they didn't really look and feel like something you might buy at a Whole Foods, right? 
Um, and that didn't make sense to us. Like, why should cannabis not have the same standards of branding and marketing? Um, shouldn't, the, shouldn't the products say the same amount of, of interesting things about it, their consumers um, as normal products do in, in, in grocery and, and, and traditional retail? And so, you know, for us, it was really a challenge. Can we go out and create a brand that feels unique, that feels innovative in and of itself? We did not go out and make, oh, it's like, beer, but with cannabis, or it's X, but with cannabis, right? We wanted it to be something really unique. It's why we called the, the brand Can. Um, and we invested that time in thinking about, well, what? how should the packaging look? What flavors do we want? What ingredients do we want to put in this? Do we want to use concentrated juices? No, we think non from concentrate juice tastes better all natural flavor because it tastes better was it easier no it made it harder it made it um more expensive but we felt that those details were really what created an incredible experience for the consumer and they could go into a dispensary in nevada pick up a six pack of our product and feel like they were getting something good that they could be proud of that that was interesting and they could show off and be like look cannabis there's no reason cannabis should be behind any other category it is this fantastic ingredient and and let's show it off through this product yeah, the one additional thing on, on flavors and why we picked such editorial profiles, like the blood orange cardamom can that you have right there, it's it only has five ingredients in it. Uh, it's blood orange juice, organic, from Sicily, not from concentrate. Really, we know the farmers. We've got cardamom extract from the Netherlands, a European and super savory aromatic uh, herb. Uh, we use organic agave nectar from Mexico. It's a, a different type of sweetener than just sugar, and it's more expensive and it's more difficult to procure, but it's it, it makes the drink taste delicious and unique and different. Um, and then we've got water and we have cannabis extract. And, and so by taking a page out of what's working in Whole Foods, what's working in new alcohol, like hard kombucha, people are looking for things that have a short list of natural ingredients that you can feel good about putting in your body. And cannabis is a plant. Let's mm -hmm. build around that and keep it simple, keep it natural and make it something that you don't have to feel guilty about or, or feel like it is a science experiment going on inside of a can. Yeah. And I love, you know, I, I love that you were just talking about how it only has five ingredients and one of the ingredients says cannabis extract. And I love that. Right. <laughs> like one day, hopefully, hopefully soon. Right. We'll be able yeah. to go into just like a whole foods and pull a can off the shelf. That'd I mean, fantastic. maybe I that, don't know. That'd yeah. be fantastic. It would be fantastic, right? Yeah. But just like there's like there's like you know hard kombucha or or yeah. alcohol. So I mean kombucha and cannabis it's, sounds pretty good. I think it's yeah. sooner than you think. <laughs> you think so? It, it, I think so. I, I think look at alcohol. There are licenses where you can buy beer and wine, and mm -hmm. there are licenses where you can buy liquor. And it's only a matter of time before cannabis splits how it's regulated, and yeah. you'll have microdose licenses, and you will have places where you can dab. Uh, it's odd that a can is restrained. So the only place you can buy it right now is a place where you can also, you know, do a dab or, you know, buy uh, a, an entire pound of flour. It, eventually, you'll probably see things uh, evolve and, and be placed on a spectrum. And we think that this is no more dangerous than a hard kombucha. It's certainly a lot less dangerous than some over-the-counter medication and a lot less dangerous than spirits like it, it's it's only a matter of time before the regulatory environment wakes up and starts treating it differently facts i can i can definitely agree with that yeah i think it's interesting too right on all of your cans you say you know uh crafted in nevada right and so this is now what your second or third market nevada this is our second so we started in california now we're in Nevada, really excited about that. Hopefully there'll be more to come because you know we want we want more consumers to to get a chance to buy this product. And so how, you know, going from California to Nevada, I think they're two completely separate beasts, right? I mean, California is a monster within itself. I think Nevada in its own, own way is it's a very powerful yet smaller market. But you know, how are you guys being able to manage that, right? As as a uh, as other brands are starting to look at look to go to other markets, how are you guys able to manage growing a uh, operation that big? It's a fascinating exercise. And when we reached out six months ago to all of the dispensary owners, buyers, marketers, anybody that has experienced a California brand just coming into Nevada and then assuming that the strength of the brand that was built in California will just carry the product through to success, um, it really ended up oftentimes leaving a number of thousands of dollars of 
of wholesale product just sitting there and not pushing it through and educating the consumer and making it fit for purpose in the Nevada market. So we know how hard it is to get somebody to understand something because we sold this microdose product that's very heavy, takes up a lot of space in the inventory room in California. And you know, we stood ourselves in dispensaries and sampled until people got it. We gave bud tender trainings, we gifted swag, we tailored our approach to the retailers. And that's how we want to do it in every market that we're in. Nevada is an amazing test case, but we, I think a lot of the reason why we've been successful early on, even though the, the product and the dosage level is different than what these dispensaries are used to, is we've got an amazing team of people on the ground, Nevada natives, locals, people who understand working diligently hand in hand with dispensary partners, respecting their needs and understanding why they're different, why they're unique before we come up with an answer for them. And we make guarantees. We say, hey, any, any dispensary that, that takes in our product, product that doesn't sell within 60 days, we'll buy it back. And then we go to work and try to figure out how to educate and, and get it to move into consumers' hands. That's awesome. Yeah, I think you you know you guys built a great team here. There, uh, we got three of your people sitting here in the studio with us. Yeah. All that, all people that we know, and all people that have been here in the Nevada market. So that's definitely a great strategy, especially coming into this market. I think, um, like you said, right? There's so many California uh, brands that they figure just waltz right into Nevada, mm-hmm. um, but that's not the case, right? And vice yeah. versa, right? You know, there's not going to be you're not going to be mm-hmm. able to take a Nevada brand of California and just waltz right in. It's not going to carry mm-hmm. over. I think. I mean, at the end of the day, it's almost. I mean, there's very few brands that can do that, and at the end of the day it's the people on the ground getting it done right day, day to day that, that make it successful um but but yeah i mean let's let's talk about some of the celebrity partners um i'm on i'm on the can instagram and I, it's like what there's oprah there there's uh, <laughs> it's essentially like uh, e-news but in the cannabis form right yeah, it's great. <laughs> i mean that, 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 i want to get high with oprah yeah uh, same. yeah can, can we talk about some of the, the celebrity partnerships and some of the strategy yeah. there it's a uh, strategy is a word that we don't really uh, have <laughs> when it comes to celebrity partnerships, but being an LA brand and having LA be the first place that we launched, we are an arm's length away from some of the most creative and brilliant and, and forward facing people in the world. Um, and they just happen to like product. They, they find it accidentally because it's recommended to them by a friend and we've never paid somebody to post. We have never paid for a partnership. It, it has literally been organic through and through all the way from the beginning. Um, we, we even have some celebrity investors that we're really excited to announce in the coming weeks. That's going to be a, a definite e-news type uh, cannabis feed thing that's <laughs> going to happen pretty soon. We, we can't disclose any of the details yet, but it's coming. Um, but really, it, like, you know, Rebel Wilson uh, was just drinking can and, and working out and posting about it on Instagram because She's like, hey, if I'm going to be working out and I'm going to kick back and, and take the edge off, why not do it with a microdose of THC instead of with an alcoholic drink? Um, yeah. Gwyneth Paltrow recommended it as one of her stay-at-home favorites because it's a different kind of buzz. If, if you're going to be home all the time drinking wine every night and feeling kind of like garbage more more days than you don't, it's not exactly a sustainable quarantine. And, and so for people like the two of them who – you don't think of as stoners. You don't think of as traditional cannabis um, people. It's not like Seth Rogen. It's not like Snoop Dogg, Martha Stewart, who were more of the early adopters, people who made cannabis usage a part of their brand. Um, these are people who are saying, why is this any different than alcohol? Mm-hmm. Why, why do we need to stigmatize it? Why do we need to treat it as its own separate, highly regulated thing? And, and we hope that by continuing to work with them, we'll be able to really change the access to cannabis in this country mm. and and help people wake up and realize it shouldn't be uh, as as difficult to get as as it is today nice nice that, and, it's, and you guys are pulling it off right i've seen a lot of different brands kind of try to pull off this uh, you know kind of new market this broader soccer mom thing right like the not stoner kind of like thing and it, and it just comes off a little bit weird right um in, in some cases but you guys are really kind of getting it getting it right here but um i mean the, the, the cans are beautiful the marketing is beautiful the, you know y- you guys seem very well spoken and brand uh, you know you're you're charmed i mean you have all these things going for you but let, let's talk about some of the like the real shit right like what's Let's talk about some of the challenges that you guys have really faced in in, in the cannabis industry. Yeah, it's, it's it's a great question. I mean, I think when we when we first started, 
really working on this together. We locked ourselves in a room um, <laughs> in California for about six months. It was just the two of us. It was like a small, it was really not even, it was sort of above a garage and there was a bathroom and, and one room. That was it. And uh, every day we showed up and we, and we tried to solve the problems that were in front of us. And there were all sorts of problems. I mean, we, in the early days, we had, we had trouble figuring out could we even launch a cannabis beverage in a can. And there are all these interesting packaging interactions and science issues that were happening, keeping stability up, keeping sort of potency and the emulsion right. Um, really, really hard science stuff. Neither of us have a, a robust you know, chemistry background to, to figure this out, but we had to go learn and do it. And because it was just the two of us and we were singularly focused on launching this product and we believed in like the idea behind it, we were able to solve that, right? I mean, we were both sort of also like emotionally very distant in that time period. It, it's so hard to start a company because all of all of the people around you, particularly the ones that care about you the most are often the ones that are, you know, encouraging you to take a job or have a steady income or like, why are you doing this crazy thing, throwing your career away, you know, to, to launch an impossible cannabis beverage. And they're not wrong, right? Like it was really risky. And so you have these this physical and emotional separations from people through this whole process and just grinding every day and trying to figure out how do we launch this product? How do we get this to market? not taking no for an answer um really kind of kind of um having that singular focus i think helped us one be the first microdose beverage but two deliver on a product that we were really proud of and that we believe in and we drink all the time i don't know what would you say yeah those early days i, I oof, if you had told me it was going to be as hard as it was i, I probably would have gone back and said no but um it, even though i feel like i'm 10 years older than i was two years ago um <laughs> I, the number, the number of obstacles that we had to overcome, uh, it, it really is something we're very proud of today. And to your earlier question about how we're able to transition from California to Nevada, you know, one of the biggest challenges we had was we had a bunch of product land in a bunch of California doors, and then it just didn't sell. It just sat there. And in, in a lot of cases, accounts dropped us because they were like, what is this like heavy thing? It's taking up a lot of space. I don't want to deal with this. And just, we didn't really know how to manage a, a relationship with a dispensary. It, it's not something that we had been trained to do. Um, and if it weren't for a couple of moments where we were thinking, whoa, do we shut down the company or do we just literally stand inside a dispensary begging them to let us put a fridge in, begging them to let us sample and show that this product is really good uh, and, and just keep waking up and keep committed to the thing that we wanted to build and unwavering in the idea that there is a place for a two milligram six pack in the market. Um, it, it, it's basically how we we've learned trial by fire from the get go. And, and so we're grateful for the muscles we built. Uh, there were some really scary moments in there. A lot of people told us you can't do this. It's impossible. Um, and we're proud to say in just this last month in California, this six pack of blood orange cardamom, it's the number one selling THC beverage skew. It's, it's beating uh, 100 milligram shots. It's, it's beating 10 milligram drinks. And everyone told us it was, it was a dumb concept. So for, for anybody who's thinking about getting started in the industry, just know that if you're making something new and different, there, there are going to be a lot of people that tell you no. And uh, don't, yeah, anyway. let, don't let that be an a, a immovable obstacle. If you believe in the product and you would buy it, and your friends would buy it, and they're not just saying that to be nice. There's probably something there. Yeah, I love Definitely. that. I love that. Hundred percent. Hey, we, we've experienced a little bit of that, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> so you can say that again. <laughs> yeah, no, we can relate, man. It, it's uh, you know, congratulations going through all that. So I mean, that that because that's what it is. It, on a daily basis, we have a new set of problems that we yeah. need to solve together, right? As, as yeah. business partners in this cannabis. Yeah, and I think something about this brand that I really like. It's very memorable, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, so a story is I was in LA probably like the last week of February, beginning of March, right before like shit hit the fan with COVID. And I was at an event called Hazy LA. Mm -hmm. um, I'm spacing the chick's name who runs it, but she's super awesome. Anyways, you guys were there had it with a pop-up, and I got to try mm. one of your guys' unique flavors at the time, and it was super delicious. And I, I was so excited when Tyler um, hit me up here saying, yo, you know, can's yeah. coming to Nevada just because these drinks are amazing. Yeah, and it's really good. Yeah, and I mean, I'm gonna crack open another one. Did, did you crack, I mean, yeah, I'm, I've got Still two plus. in the bank right now. Yeah. So, oh, you're already two yeah. down. Yeah, two, two down. I'm on number three. <laughs> I gotta catch up. You know, I'm not ashamed of it. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, congrats on on solving the, the Nevada problem in itself, right? I think I think getting into the Nevada market is is really can prove to be really hard for some people, and you guys have got into here. But I, I love those stories, right? And it just it, it it makes it real, you know what I mean? Because I think you know, I mean, fuck, man, I mean, j just just in essence, the cannabis industry is just just such a a, a conundrum of issues. treacherous place, man. You know what I mean, and, a lot of people uh, want to fuck you over. Yeah, and it's just not all the way sorted out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Federally and all that shit. It's a brand right new now. market. Everything's cash. No banks. It's not easy. But, but but these guys are doing it. Yeah, two markets now too. Two right? Markets, so yeah. anyone could do it. I mean, you know, if if you and me could sell some weed, I mean, <laughs> fuck. If you and I can get yeah, two markets, I mean, man. there's some hope for people out there. <laughs> but listen, thank Wait, you guys. Hold on. Yeah, go. Go not it. sorting itself out yet um because i think you know we hear this a lot and and there's definitely over the last couple of years been a bit of a correction it, there was this big boom everyone was like cannabis is going to yeah. be massive it's going to be massive today mm -hmm. and you know we know that it takes time and when the dot-com bubble burst it wasn't that the internet wasn't valuable it's not that the internet was this made-up thing that never came to fruition it was that it just took a lot of time for people to narrowly focus on the stuff that is differentiated and gives people a, a good experience. And so I feel like we're still in such early innings, even in Nevada, it's nice of you to say we've solved the problem. We're, we're at the very beginning of solving the problem and getting people in Nevada to love us. And, and yeah. we think it's gonna be a lot of hard work. Uh, and and it, it's it's just a, a part of the process. Um, we're, we're probably inning two of nine at, at most. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, listen, man, we, you know, we, we we're here to help. Yeah. I mean, we are here to help, you know what I mean? And, and get, you know, we appreciate you. We appreciate you coming on, on this show and just getting the chance to talk to you guys. I, I feel like I want, definitely have, want to have some more conversations with you guys and kind of swap stories. And uh, I'm sure we got some similar war stories out there, um, you know, solving these cannabis problems, but uh, what, what, you know, where, where can they find you guys? um on the on the instagram and where else and send us off with some parting thoughts at drink can d-r-i-n-k-c-a-n-n -N -N. if you're in nevada uh we've got i think about 20 retailers now um our, our biggest accounts are apothecarium and medmen and rise and essence We've got a bunch of new ones that are launching this week. And the best place to find out about where we're available is on our Instagram. So uh, throw us a follow. It, it's pretty funny. It's, uh, it's, it's cute. Uh, it's different. <laughs> and, um, and go get some uh, six packs uh, and share them with your friends who've never tried cannabis before. I can't tell you how many times we've had people say, I gave it to my grandma. I gave it to my mom who used to judge me for being a cannabis user and now we have a totally different connection because she understands that she can have cannabis without it being overwhelming and without it being a negative experience out there changing lives my man <laughs> so okay. early. thank you guys so much for coming on the show and uh if you guys want to check them out make sure to follow them at drink can thanks guys we appreciate it thanks for having us Ooh, solid, solid group of guys. Solid, two, two solid human beings that yeah. are trying to solve cannabis problems, man. I love it. Yeah, I do too. And, and now we're drinking their products here in Nevada. Cheers. I'm on number three. Cheers. Boom. Uh, le lemon I lavender. just like this. Okay. This, <laughs> uh, it's blase, right? Blase about being basic. Yeah. Yeah. Don't call me basic or do. It doesn't matter. TBH. You may have met me before, but never seen me like this with an all natural herbal smoothness. I'm hard to miss and you wouldn't want to miss me. Oh, I thought there should be a wink at the end there. Oh, like a, yeah, like a, <laughs> that's, a, that's a nice one. Yeah, that's pretty clever, these man. Are, these are good. It's pretty good. JC, but we also own a cannabis company too, bro. We do. What have we been doing? <laughs> Selling a bunch of cannabis. <laughs> Creating the most can unique cannabis products in the market. You know, we're yeah. on the path. We're on the path. What, what do we got going on? What are we, what are we, um, I'm, we're launching a, ma a major hype video tomorrow. Yes. The most major of the major hype videos. Yep. I think, did you hit 50 yet? 50 comments yet? Uh, yeah, I think we're at like 65. 65 yeah. comments. So the, the video is ready to rock and roll. I think we're going to drop it what first thing tomorrow morning later for, today? first thing in the tomorrow morning yeah i think you know we drop one or two a year to kind of yeah. sum up the year and, well, and where we're doing where we're at mm -hmm. we got some good things on the horizon we're going to be in reno next week yes we're going to be in reno april no april reno uh october 8th through yeah. 12th sorry i'm like yeah, all, all my months are mixed up you, i've been inside for the past six months i don't know where the <laughs> fuck i'm at half the time we're gonna be in reno october 8th through 12th we're gonna be shooting a ton of culturist foods while we're there yeah we got a bunch of new ones that are coming out 
Um, we're going to be, we launched our live resin. Yes. It's going to be coming to market very soon. We're about two weeks away from weeks that away. dropping in a couple of different dispensaries here. Stay tuned for more information on that. Uh, we have some new cultivation partners that are going to be coming online here very shortly. We're yes. so close. Fingers crossed. We're uh, going to be the solution to everybody's flower. Ho oh, hopefully. That's yeah. the plan, right? We want to be solutions. We want to yeah. solve problems. Yes, we do. Um, we're going to have some very unique products coming out here very shortly. Once we get, you know, we, we've been in trial and error for almost the past six months now. Yeah, we got some of them approved by the state, ready to Wait, send it. The, sta the, the state of Nevada says my product's good, so yeah. everyone else just think it's good too. <laughs> um, and uh, and yeah, man, everything's rocking well. And oh shit, we're going to Oklahoma. We're going to Oklahoma, dog. Fuck, fuck, we're gonna be in two markets too. That's <laughs> yes. gonna be crazy. It's gonna be crazy. We're, gonna, we're gonna get to solve a bunch of Oklahoma problems. I, dude, listen, I I don't know if I want to solve those problems, man. It's gonna God, be crazy. Can you imagine <laughs> after we get them solved? Though? I, it's gonna be good for everybody else too. Yes. Me and Chuck are gonna go out there. I, I'm just so like, it's like crazy to me that me and Chuck like. Like from four years ago when I first met that motherfucker at New Leaf in Tahoe. Yeah. And I was like, and he's like just the guy that was doing the podcast. Now I'm going to live with him for 32 days. I, yeah. I just feel bad for him, honestly. I do too, actually. You know? <laughs> like he has no clue what he's about to walk into. The, like the complete storm of a human being that I am. I mean, you know, he's got a pretty good idea. We've, yeah. we've done some traveling. We've done year. some traveling. So, uh, but yeah, we got a lot of stuff on the horizon, man. And we'll, we'll have some more details very soon. We won't be here next week. We're going to yep. be in Reno. So... We might have a special broadcast for that one. Stay tuned for details on that. And I think that's it. I think that's it. Yeah. I mean, that's the show. Yeah, that's it. That's thank it. you. That's a wrap. Thank, thanks so much for the founders of Canned. It was, uh, it was uh, Luke and Jake that came on the show. Um, check these guys out somewhere. These are really good. I think they sell them at Essence, which I know is a ma major chain here in Nevada. Um, they got a ton of those across the state. So check them out, man. Uh, this, this one's really good. This is the Grapefruit Rose Rosemary. Mm. Delicious. I got three in the bank. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Happy, happy Thursday. Peace out. Peace.